I just want to tell you guys straight up, making videos is hard. And it's very challenging. You guys make comments like, oh, Jamie, that was so crystal clear. That was awesome. Thank you for the excellent explanation. And what you don't realize is behind a five to 10 minute video was hours and hours of me painstakingly try to shove a concept into my head. And then after I get that concept in my head, organize it and then find the best way to explain it and then try to explain it in class. And it really takes about three, well, that's not three, <laughs> three or four semesters of teaching a concept before I finally find the perfect way I want to teach something. So whenever you see a video of mine and you like it, uh, just know there's a backstory. And this is one of those videos. In fact, pretty much all my videos are one of those videos. Uh, but this is one of those videos, and I struggled with this concept for a long time. It's uh, the concept of worst case. I remember in my own algorithms class, call oh, eons ago, when the professor got up and said, well, we pretty much focus on the worst case when it comes to algorithm complexity. And I struggled for years. I'm like, what is the big deal with worst case? Why are we so pessimistic? I mean, we have an average case, we have a best case. Hey, let's be optimistic. We just might get lucky once in a while, but we tended to just focus on the worst case. What's so special about the worst case? Why are we, this just doesn't make sense. And uh, you know, after a few years, I was able to pull this together and I wanna share with you uh, why we focus on the worst case. Yeah, we can do an average case analysis. Uh, oh, excuse me while I adjust here. Oh, you like my red hoodie? We see University of Utah. I'll explain the red hoodie at the end of the video. Uh, red hoodie is way cool. Uh, and we can generally, not generally, uh, there's some cases. Well, okay, first of all, worst case, uh, it's easier to compute than the average case in many scenarios. Is that fair? Uh, sometimes it's easier to compute than the best case. All right, uh, but but really, here, look, I, I, let's just read this. Look, I, I did some Googling this morning. One dead, 30 hertz in water slide collapse. This is CNN.com, and this is CNN.com from the 90s. Look, this article is June 3rd, 1997. Look, CNN, and obviously we have some missing photos here, but look down here. <laughs> this is so old school. Anyway, uh, let's talk worst case. All right, I was talking to my buddy Jake. Uh, Jake watches a lot of these videos and does some quality assurance for me on the especially these algorithm related videos because jake uh, has extensive algorithms background and so uh, he actually told me that he went to this school and uh he was he graduated a year or two when this happened but let me let me just ooh students ignored warning does that ever happen oh, yeah, yeah. okay concord california i'm curious here we go here's concord california oh look it's the bay area all right there's concord uh, Jake actually lives in Pleasanton, or Pleasant, Pleasanton, somewhere in here. Uh, Silicon Valley area. I was just here again last week. I, I told you guys I was there. I did that video where I was on the beach. Uh, the beach was right here, by the way. This is Half Moon Bay. Concord, California, a popular Northern California amusement park, remained closed Tuesday, the day after a water slide collapsed, killing a teenage girl and critically injuring six of her high school classmates. At least 30 people were injured. I don't get it. Critically injuring six. Okay. At least 30 people were injured, not critically, but injured in Monday afternoon's accident at Waterworld, USA, about 30 miles northeast of San Francisco. The students, seniors on a pre-graduation outing, ignored a lifeguard's warning and tried to ride down the 75-foot-tall slide together according to Waterworld General Manager Steve Mayer. Our guard couldn't control it. He said of the large gathering of teenagers going down the water slide, the accident occurred soon after the park announced that Napa High School students visiting Waterworld, about 120 in all, according to the school, should return to their buses for the trip home. At that point, some of them rushed to the top of the slide, according to Rick McCurry, Vice President of Premier Parks Incorporated, who owns Waterworld. Survivors said they were trying to break a school record for the total number on the slide when it gave way. Water turned red with blood. Witnesses said people on the winding slide called the Banzai Pipeline crashed to the ground when it collapsed. The pool of water below turned red with blood. 
The injured teens were screaming and crying for help, witnesses said. It was a very chaotic scene at first. One police officer at the park said it was pandemonium, another officer said. One girl, a 17-year-old Napa student who was not identified, died 45 minutes later from a crushed chest. Helicopters and ambulances transported the injured uh, to nine hospitals. In a statement issued late on Monday, Premier Parks defended its safety record. Safety is our number one priority. Based upon what we know at this point, we believe this slide was safe. Um, sad. Very sad. Obviously, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. A bunch of teenagers. I was a teenager. I was stupid. I still am, kind of, you know. Uh, we're all stupid in some way. But when we're teenagers, we just kind of turn in our brain and we don't get it back to her about 20, 25 year old. I think that's fair to say. At least that was true in my case. Uh, the designers of this slide, what was the worst case they were planning for? And if you think about uh, designing a water slide, which is something I've never done, I, I bet the thought probably never crossed their mind that they would have a ton of teenagers rush this slide. Okay, and, and so in worst case, when we're considering worst case, we're basically saying, what is the max we're going to deal with? When we write an algorithm, what's the worst it will do with any given data set? All right, let me let me uh come come over here, not there. I want to come over here. Uh, I have some of our fraternities back here. We have n squared. I know it says x. I have to type x for the graphing calculator. This is n squared, n log n, n and uh, n. Sorry, it's hard to see x <laughs> and say n at the same time. Linear, linear arithmetic, and uh, quadratic linear right here that's a bad circle linear rhythmic quadratic i can't even circle i need to get my stylus out anyway um if we know that our algorithm is worst case quadratic which is this red line right here we know that we don't have a prayer all right if our algorithm performs somewhere in here most of the time you know, or maybe our algorithm most of the time is pretty good. Hey, our algorithm most of the time, average case, is logarithmic. There you go. I just kind of drew a horrible logarithmic looking line. Yeah, life's good for most of the time. But then, hey, once in a while, once in a blue moon, uh, worst case, we just might have a bunch of kids rush the water slide and then bad things happen. Okay, let's let's say this the this is our timeline for an algorithm uh, that we run maybe every frame or every other frame in a game okay it's 30 frames 60 frames a second in fact i had this happen to me at ea games for the most part my algorithm was running great but then there was this kind of corner case where it would jet off into ah and and then it would freeze right if say we have to process 600 items if we have a linear algorithm, okay, we can deal with that. Life's good. We're, we're okay. If, it, if we're worst case linear. Um, if we're linear rhythmic, yeah, it's kind of up here off the screen. But, hey, we'll get there. And in computer time, we can get there. No big deal. But if our algorithm is worst case quadratic, uh, we may as well just lock the game up. Right? How many times have you had an app freeze up on you and the operating system pops up and says, we don't know quite what's going on, uh, but this thing is stuck in some loop, and we're just kind of waiting on it. Do you want to keep waiting, or do you want to kill it? And you don't know if that app is stuck in an infinite loop, or if that app is stuck in a quadratic algorithm. Okay, If the, if the app is stuck in a quadratic algorithm, you can wait, and if the data set is small enough, meaning somewhere in this range, yeah, go ahead and click the wait button and go get your lunch or whatever and come back and maybe your window won't be frozen anymore. But the thing I want to point out here is uh, it, you may as well be frozen if your worst case is is uh, quadratic here. So when we're saying worst case, what we're really saying is if we know that our worst case is going to be linear rhythmic or linear or something that's not quadratic, then we can probably live with that. Right? We could probably, depending on our situation, our data set size, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, 
We can handle that. Go ahead, throw 30 seniors on the water slide. We designed this water slide to handle 1,000 seniors, which you can physically not put on this water slide. And it doesn't matter. We're not going to have a bad day. Everyone have a good laugh. Maybe people bump into each other in the pool at the bottom where everybody lands. But for the most part, yeah, everyone's going to go home and be okay. And we're not going to have this worst case situation of, of people getting injured and even a death. All right. I, I think about this a lot when I get into an elevator. You ever like, here's a, here's something else I looked up before I started recording the video. I Googled elevator maximum capacity sign and a bunch of signs here, but, but every time I get in an elevator, look, look, here we go. Capacity 5,000 pounds, uh, passengers elevator too. So when I get in an elevator, I actually bring a bathroom scale. And before I let other people get into the elevator with me, I put the scale down on the floor and I say, you need to step on this. We're going to add up everybody's weight because I want to make sure we don't exceed this max weight because that's what they've planned for. And if we exceed that max weight, we might come crashing down and all of us die. And you don't want to die, do you? I, I know you don't want to die. This is a critical decision whether or not we're going to get in this elevator together. And look, I'm a big guy. All right. Let's get on this bathroom scale, buddy, and I'll add your weight in. Okay, I'm totally kidding. I don't do that. Uh, but have you ever gotten in an elevator with a bunch of people and got kind of nervous and be like, uh, you know, you start doing some mental math like, okay, you look like you weigh this much. You look like, are we going to crash and die today? I'm scared to death of heights. Absolutely hate heights. Hate getting in elevators. All right. And, and look, look, okay, the sign may say capacity 5,000 pounds. But I'm going to guess that they this actually isn't the actual max. Right? I heard this uh, theorem, or I don't know what you call it, if you call it a theorem or not, uh, the 10x rule. All right? You plan for... Oh, look, my alarm's going off. Look, it's 4.15 a.m. Um, this is the time I usually get up to do some videos, but... You know, when you have little ones that climb in your bed and kick you out of your bed, then you get up earlier and do videos. Anyway, <clears throat> you get in the uh, the 10x rule. Plan for 10 times the load that you currently have. Maybe you'll get lucky. I had some students work at Blendtec. Go check out Blendtec's videos on YouTube. Uh, they're hilarious. Blendtec blends things in blenders. They blended an iPad, uh, iPhone, anytime an iProduct comes, they blended a broom, you know, and Anyway, I have one of these blenders. They're scary when you turn them on. They're like, ah! um, anyway, my students told me when they blended an iPad, and I think it was an iPad 1 or iPad 2, uh, but obviously they weren't my students at the time. They had graduated and moved on. But they said that their website just got pounded. They weren't hosting the video themselves. You, the, uh, YouTube wasn't a, as big a thing back then. I can't remember the deal. They had the video hosted themselves, and their site was taking a lot of hits because a lot of people want to see this iPad blended. And, uh, you know, for the most part, their site could handle uh, the traffic that was, you know, it was just company website, you know, usual traffic. And then all of a sudden you blend an iPad and everybody wants to watch the iPad video. It's like everybody wants to jump on the water slide. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, their site didn't go down, but they had to monitor it rather closely and, and do some crazy things real fast to handle that much traffic. It was a spike. It was a spike. Okay, same deal with this elevator here. Capacity, 5,000 pounds. 10x rule. If you can design your system to handle 10 times the load, if your budget allows, then awesome. Okay? But, but when I say budget, what I really mean is your salary, your time, to make an algorithm that it's not quadratic. That's pretty much brute force there. You, you come hell or high water, you're going to solve this algorithm, which is good. Solving the algorithm is a step uh, to getting there, but then solving the algorithm, uh, more elegantly, look, I'm trying to give you a, a less of a slope here. And look, we'll just come back over here. Uh, we'll just come back over here. Um, right there. If, if you can spend the, invest the time, um, to come up with a more elegant algorithm, that's not quadratic, but in one of these other, uh, they're called orders of growth, but I love calling them fraternities instead. Then pin rose on your nose. Good job. Um, because you just, uh, as far as handling more load than you probably need, good job. I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, I was in Silicon Valley. Uh, one of my tr recent trips to Silicon Valley, I visited this tower here. It's in San Francisco. It's pretty cool. Read the history on this tower. Very interesting about a lady who liked to 
basically fight fires and she had a lot of money and she left some of the money uh, to build, beautify the city of San Francisco and that's what they came up with. They built this tower called Coit Tower. Her last name's Coit. I came here. It was beautiful. It's up on a hill. This The view of this of San Francisco up there is just amazing. Uh, you have to pay to go in the elevator though. All right, and you come in here, and this elevator is not very big. All right, and you know, here, look, ooh, like there's people in the elevator, very small elevator. And you get in the elevator, and it's one of those elevators where when the door, it's basically a gate that closes. It's not doors that close. So you can see the wall going by you, which did absolutely no good for my fear of heights. But once the elevator door is opened at the top, I was like, okay, I'm out. And then I took a bunch of pictures, went back in, closed my eyes. Okay, take the elevator down. I'm such a sissy. Max load. Worst case, we're going to plan. We need to just, we need to determine what the worst case of our algorithm is. Because if we know the worst case and we know that, hey, this is not acceptable, if we get a frame spike, then the spike may be infinite time as far as the user is concerned. Not reasonable. We need to come up with a, more, uh, a, a better algorithm here uh, in one of the lower or faster or lower orders of growth fraternities. I told you at the video I'd explain this hoodie. Is my University of Utah nice bright red hoodie. Remember in the game developer videos I told you about branding my students and I branded them. Uh, University of Utah brands their students with hoodies. Very nice hoodies. The University of Utah, they, they flood the floor with uh, students in these hoodies. I teach at the University of Utah now. I graduated from the University of Utah. I graduated in the game program. And so that's what red hoodie is about. But unfortunately, my wife saw this hoodie. Well, I guess it's probably fortunate. My wife saw this hoodie and said, I really like that hoodie. And she's been wearing it a lot more than I have. And that's just what happens. You know, God gives us these gorgeous women. And they come and they blink their eyes just so sweet. You know, pretty, 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 pretty. Like, oh, that hoodie's just so, oh, I really like that. Oh, have the hoodie, honey. Go ahead. Whatever. Uh, something else I want to point out. If you Google top game development colleges, Princeton Review, uh, University of Utah just barely ranked again. We ranked so well. I'm just, mm, okay. Top 50 college programs. Oh, look, an advertisement. Go away. You're going to force me to have, an, to make an account? There we go. Ha ha. I opened up the element inspector and deleted all the elements and got that thing out of my face. It's just lame. Okay, look, look. Oh, what did I say? Undergraduate number one, University of Utah. There are a bunch of other cool schools, but University of Utah, we're number one. Uh, we've ranked one or two or three in the past several years. You can look that up. I can't remember all the details, but there we go. Gr undergraduate, which is number one. This is the program I teach in. Bragging rights there. Uh, and then let's look at the top 25 graduate programs. Number three is University of Utah. We've been to, I think we've even been one in graduate. I can't remember. Anyway, we're in the top schools ranked by the Princeton Review. We have to go through this whole review process. They look at what we're doing. We submit a bunch of stuff to them. Blah, blah, blah. I graduated from the graduate program here, and I've also taught a few classes and assisted there in the graduate program. But right now I'm teaching the algorithms in the undergraduate program. Yada, yada, yada. Bragging rights. What's that got to do with the worst case? I don't know. But there you go. Now you know about the hoodie.